Hello and welcome to the fourth of our Lent Talks uh, today, looking at one of my personal uh, heroes in the faith, Father Trevor Huddleston. Uh, not a saint as we might know it, but someone who was a valiant fighter and a valiant campaigner for love and peace and justice in the world. One of my earliest memories, really, of hearing about the inspiring life of a priest is a story uh, that Desmond Tutu told of the young Desmond Tutu walking with his mother along the street and normally uh, when seeing a white person approaching they would step off the pavement to make way for them but on this particular day they were walking down the sidewalk and the white man stepped off the sidewalk and uh, as he passed Tutu and his mother, he doffed his hat as a gesture of respect and of kindness. And that person, that man, was Bishop Trevor Huddleston at that time, uh, an Anglican priest, showing in that simple act uh, the love of Christ for all people. That saying that the status quo, the regime of apartheid, the regime of segregation, was not acceptable and had no place in a Christian understanding of the dignity of all human people. Trevor Huddleston was born in Bedford and was educated at Lansing College. Lansing College is down on the south coast near Brighton and is a school with a long Anglo-Catholic tradition, a beautiful uh, chapel up on a hill uh, as a uh, real reminder of the centrality of the Christian and Catholic faith to the school. And so there Trevor Huddleston will have learnt uh, all about the Christian faith in the same way that we have the Christian faith and worship in our own churches. He went on from Lansing to Christ Church Oxford and then to Wells Theological College. He joined the community of the Resurrection in 1939, taking his vows in 1941, uh, and before that he was the curate of St Mark Swindon. Now, the community of the resurrection is, of course, well known to many of us. We have strong connections through Father Nicholas Stebbing and his work at Torero, but also the work of Codrington College in the Caribbean, uh, training priests there. So we know the work of those monks very well. And for a long time, they had houses out in Africa uh, where they worked with people and they taught and they had schools uh, and ran areas of support and indeed parishes. In September 1940, Huddleston sailed to Cape Town, and in 1943, he went to the community of the Resurrection Station at Rosenthalville uh, near Johannesburg, South Africa. He was sent there to build up the work of Raymond Rains, whose monumental efforts there had built three, school, three churches, seven schools, and three nursery schools, catering for over 6,000 children. Uh, it was a demanding uh, work and Rains had been uh, summoned back to Murfield in order to recuperate and he was keen that someone who had the strength in order to do it would be able to go. Uh, Huddleston had nursed Rains whilst he was in the infirmary in uh, Murfield and it was that friendship uh, that uh, made Rains believe that he should be his successor over the course of uh, a good number of years, uh, from 1943 until 1956, uh, Rains worked as the priest in charge of the Community of the Resurrection's mission in Sophia Town and Orlando. And Huddleston mission, uh, ministered to the townships there and was elected as Community of the Resurrection's provincial uh, master as well as superintendent of St Peter's School. The passing into legislation of the Group Areas Act in 1950 uh, led to Huddleston along with Nelson Mandela, Helen Joseph and Ruth First to become involved in protests in Sophia Town. It was a decision to defend the rights of those who lived in the townships. There was also a decision to close down St Peter's School where Trout Huddleston was the superintendent uh, making it a government school rather uh, than a church control school and so he was again in conflict with the authorities. As a result of 13 years of working in South Africa, Huddleston gained a reputation uh, as a respected priest 
and a respected anti-apartheid activist. He got the nickname the Dauntless One, uh, someone who was willing to go into battle and to fight for what is right, who was willing to go and really stand up for the rights of people. He had a lasting effect on people's lives. Uh, just one example, in 1954, he gave Hugh Masa Masekela his first trumpet, um, and um, he then went on, Masekela went on to found uh, a, a, a band and to become uh, a famous uh, trumpeter. And it was through that act of kindness, through recognising someone's talent, uh, that he was able to do that. But there were concerns for Huddleston's safety. In 1955, he was recalled uh, to England uh, to come back in order to uh, keep him safe. This was because um, of all of the violence that was directed at those who were fighting apartheid there. He came back and he wrote his book, Naught for Your Comfort, which was published in 1956, uh, a book that made the headlines in the United Kingdom and the United States uh, as a book that really spoke to what was going on in South Africa, a real sense of sending a message, of getting the message out there. I just want to consider some um, extracts from uh, Naught for Your Comfort. Huddleston really speaks about obedience and his disappointment at being recalled back to England. He wanted to stay in Africa to continue uh, his work, to continue the good work he believed he was doing there. But there's this thing about obedience, about monastic obedience, amongst uh, vow to chastity, poverty and obedience, to being under the authority of someone else. Uh, it can be quite a freeing thing, actually, not to have to make decisions, but equally it can be a frustrating thing. And so Huddleston uh, says, Look, thy last on all things lovely every hour. It is that vow of obedience which alone gives a man strength when he most needs it, to die by parting from what he loves. Nothing else could have torn me away from Africa at this moment, and no other motive but a supernatural one could be sufficient or strong enough to make sense of such a parting. And so we get a real sense there of someone who hands over to God uh, their lives, who understands that God's uh, life, that his calling is to hand over his life to God, that somehow uh, in his returning to England, despite the fact he believes he should remain uh, working in South Africa, there is somewhere the hand of God. And perhaps that was found in his uh, later life. In 1959, uh, he was uh, there to address the founding meeting of the anti-apartheid movement, uh, which was held in London. And in 1961, he became the vice president of the AAM, which he held until 1981. In 1960, Huddleston was consecrated the Bishop of the Maasai, Tanzania. Um, and that was a position he held for eight years before coming back to uh, be Bishop of Stepney in the Diocese of London, and then uh, to be Bishop of Mauritius. And then he was Archbishop of the province of the Indian Ocean. Despite all of this church work, despite all that he was doing, Huddleston was increasingly focused on his anti-apartheid work. Um, he was someone who uh, worked tirelessly uh, to, to, to keep the work going. In 1981, uh, after the death of Bishop Ambrose Reeves, uh, Troddleston was elected the president of the anti-apartheid movement, which he held until 1994. Uh, he was someone who worked tirelessly to bring aid and relief to uh, those who were in need in South Africa. In 1984, in order to protest the visit of President Botha, Huddleston led an AAM delegation to meet the Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. In the same year, he addressed the United Nations and delivered a worldwide petition calling for the release of Nelson Mandela. Huddleston also addressed the United Nations Special Committee Against Apartheid. And Huddleston, along with Thabo Mbeki, addressed the Artists Against Apartheid at a march and festival on the 28th of June 1986, an event that was uh, attended by over 250,000 people. In 1987, he organised the Harare International Conference on Children Repression and the Law in Apartheid, which brought together leaders of the South African Liberation Movement, and in 1988 
Huddleston initiated the Nelson Mandela Freedom at 70 campaign, which included the birthday concert at Wembley Stadium. So we can see that he was uh, somewhere, someone who uh, was willing to go to all sorts of lengths, willing to be able to reach out to as many people as possible in order to bring about change. He wasn't afraid of speaking to authority, wasn't afraid of speaking to power, uh, but also really uh, uh, speaking about what was important and in bringing uh, freedom to those in need. It's interesting, of course, uh, that he didn't just work on a, a big stage. Uh, he wasn't just uh, interested in dealing with uh, you know, the high and the powerful and seeing that way. He was trying to make change at a low level too. And a very straightforward uh, example, uh, in his book, Lord For Your Comfort, he describes the example of a boarding school boy called Jonas, who was arrested one day during the holidays and charged with being a vagrant. Father Huddleston found him in a cell and asked where his uh, most precious, I suppose, and important document was, his pass, because uh, no African could be outside without a pass. Even if they just popped out for five minutes, they required uh, the pass to be able to be seen. The boy told Huddleston they tore it up, and there, in a waste paper basket nearby, Father Huddleston found the pass in four pieces. He retrieved it and refused to surrender it to the sergeant in charge and was himself arrested. In this case, he had the satisfaction of a cap-in-hand apology from the commandant the next morning. But he writes, Yet for every boy like Jonas, whose arrest was reported to me, there are a thousand who have no one to care, a thousand for whom a torn-up pass might mean ten days in prison, the loss of a job, the beginning of that swift and terrible journey into crime. A real sense in which uh, the whole person matters, in which people um, are, are vitally important and in which injustice cannot be allowed uh, to last. And so by working on injustice at a low level, he is able to build up um, that yeah, uh, fight against injustice at a higher level. And I think his philosophy is uh, really summed up in um, these uh, phrases. My responsibility is always and everywhere the same to see in my brother more even than the personality and manhood that are his. My task is always and everywhere the same, to see Christ himself. I'm going to repeat that because I think it's so good. My responsibility is always and everywhere the same, to see in my brother more than even the personality and manhood that are his. My task is always and everywhere the same, to see Christ himself. Doctrines of things like apartheid and uh, the evils of racism are about seeing people as different or seeing people as other. The Christian gospel teaches us that we are each loved equally by God. We're each created in God's image and loved by God. And when we look at our neighbour, when we look at somebody else, when we look at the person next to us in the pew or the person who lives next to us or the person uh, who we see in the street, we are to see Christ himself. In each interaction that we make with other people, we are to see Jesus Christ at the centre. We're to see Jesus Christ in that person. And when we do that, when we see Christ in each other, we're more able to understand this need for service and this need for justice and this need for help. That nobody, nobody should be treated uh, in a way that is not fully respectful and that is not fully uh, valued of their human dignity. And for Huddleston, the idea of home uh, is important, and he found his home in Sophia Town. Uh, he found it as a place uh, that was home, a place of love and a place of the faith. He built churches and uh, he was one to encourage church going, to encourage people to be at Mass on Sunday. And he writes in his book about um, taking the Blessed Sacrament to people in their homes, of hearing confessions, of starting a brass band, um, of uh, getting uh, swimming baths uh, for the community, of allowing uh, power to be uh, used as an electric generator in order to allow power to be reached for the houses and also uh, of children getting awarded scholarships to schools 
um, and so that he would, the children would be able to get an education. In all of this, Huddleston values human dignity. He sees in each person the image of God. He sees in each person Christ. He sees that each person is made in that image of God and sees that anything that rather tries to sully that or tries to mar that is a sin and needs to be resisted and needs to be worked against. And Huddleston is an example of a priest who goes to great lengths in order to change society, in order to make society more Christian, in order to see that what is uh, wrong and what perverts Christian doctrine uh, cannot uh, be acceptable. And so he works hard to bring that truth uh, into light, to speak to power, to speak of justice, and to really live out the Christian gospel in a practical way, in a small way. We began with just hearing about him stepping off the pavement in order to doff his hat at uh, Desmond Tutu and his mother. A small act, an act of kindness, an act of respect, and an act that made Desmond Tutu feel that he was respected, that he had value, that this was different, that this man was different. And so how often in our own lives can we make those small actions that will really transform people's lives? So simply we end with the prayer of Trevor Huddleston. God bless Africa, guard her people, guide her leaders and give her peace. Amen.